Welcome to Studio Z. Today we're going to be talking about how to make a bass drop. How the hell you make a bass drop? Let's do it. So I'm going to show you today three different ways of making a bass drop. One in Ableton, one in Massive, and one in Omnisphere. Let's take a listen to a little track here. Here we go. So I want to put a bass drop right at the very end of this. Um, in fact, actually, I have a little bass drop going on. Let's go ahead and take that out. That's not it. It's right there. That's just an audio track. I'm going to take that out. It's pre-recorded. So I'm going to put my own bass drop right here. Boom. Right there. So first of all, i got to figure out what key this is in. Now, I happen to write a lot of things in the key of C minor, and then I just tra transpose it after that. Just my way of doing things. So. I pretty much know that it's going to be in C minor. What we're going to do is I've got three different instances. I have three tracks. I've got an Ableton track here. And we're going to, I'm going to delete this so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I've got a track for Massive and I got a track for Omnisphere here. And we're going to talk about that. So let's start with Ableton. I want to make a bass dive and I need a bass. So we're going to look into our instrument files and we're going to find a bass that sounds, you want something that sounds soft with a little, kind of a smooth bass. Typically, sine wave basses sound great. So I'm... I'm not finding exactly what I want, but I'm going to just pick one of these and we're going to go with it. Let's grab this one. It has a lot of saw in it, but we can adapt it a little bit. So we're going to modify that. We're going to drop it here on the Ableton track. And the very first thing I want to do is I want to change the pitch bend range for this instrument to be 12. So I'm going to just type 12 in here. And, um, we're going to add a little MIDI clip here. So I'm going to throw something in. Let's do it right here. And uh, then we'll actually drag it up. All right. So this is my clip. There's nothing in it yet, but we're going to add the note C minor or, or C. I'm sorry. We're going to just add a C note here and we're going to stretch it out. Let's just do, um, uh, I think it's half a measure here. So from 17 to 17 and a half. Okay. And I do know that this song happens to, um, the instruments that are MIDI in here happen to have a pitch bend and, uh, it, it's modulating the key by half a semitone or one semitone. So I'm going to do that on this. So I'm going to be in the same key. So really the key is really B. I think the key is B minor for this song. All right. So now I have, I have the sound. I'm going to turn it on. That's what I got so far. It's a little high. So I'm going to changed it down to an octave. Okay. I changed down two octaves and all we're going to do is we're going to just grab this and we're going to use the envelope tool in Ableton to bend this. So I'm going to, the way I do it is I put two marks here and then I delete these marks here. It's just the way I do it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> And then I drop it. Now I have it exactly, it starts exactly on zero here. And it goes to, uh, down to a full, it goes all the way down to the far, furthest the pitch bin can allow. So actually I'm going to keep it down like this. Okay. And we'll go out a little further. Now we already have something falling. Okay. It is going a little too low. So let's start this at C2. Okay. We already have a pitch bend, but it doesn't sound that great. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple things. We're going to throw in an EQ on this and, um, I want to 
just first of all just take off two and three, and I'm going to just add a um, low pass filter here. Now we're just grabbing those the sub without actually grabbing a lot of the grit on the high end. I'll turn it up a little bit here. All right. Now, if we want to make this sound last a little bit longer, we can actually change the ADSR of the sound so that you can actually hear um, so that it lasts just a little bit more. It has a little bit more longer release. We're going to change the sustain, the release time to be a little longer here. Okay, that's too long. Too long. Okay, great. Actually, I'm going to expand this out a little bit, and I'm going to actually create, I'm going to make this, because our release time might be a little long, I'm going to actually keep this note down here for a little longer. In fact, you could just kill it completely. And there you go. Now we've got a nice little sub drop. So let's listen to how that sounds in the mix. So now let's do the same thing in Massive. Let's create a bass drop. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that MIDI clip that we created, because we're just going to use that same MIDI clip. We're going to drop it on Massive. And uh, we're going to open up Massive. And notice I've got the trans transpose uh, half a, or one semitone that's going to give us put it in the right key. And I'm going to start with a new sound. So I've got totally fresh sound here. And right now, if I hit, if I hit play, it's going to sound like this pretty bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to first start off by turning off some of our oscillators. We don't need this stuff right now. Um, and I am just going to add a sine wave to this. So we're going to add a sine wave. This is a uh, oscillator that uses a sine square wave, but I'm going to turn it more toward the sine wave portion of it. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to use my, um, in the oscillator area, I can decide how many semitones I want the pitch drop to, to drop. So we're going to go negative 12. Already got a great pitch drop right there. It's pretty amazing. But we're going to add some things to it. First of all, I want to add a little bit of release on the amp so that it doesn't cut off so fast. There we go. So it's giving me a little bit of release there. Uh, secondly, I want to now add another oscillator. And let's do a different sound to give it a little bit of grit. And let's add Okay, now we have a little bit of a uh, little bit of grit. But now I want to filter some of that out. And we're going to use this filter right here, the number 1 filter. We're going to do a low pass filter on this. And I'm going to turn up the volume here. Okay, that's kind of nice. If we wanted to, we could add a little bit more grit with some other flavors. But right now, I want to add. Um, I still want to keep things very sub bassy. That's why I'm taking out a lot of that high end grit. But I wanted to give it a little bit of texture. Uh, if, you, if I jump over here to the voicing, I can add another voice to this, and then add the pan positioning on, and this will give it a stereo feel. So now listen. So now it's coming through kind of both headphones. It depends on where you want that in the mix. But I think that adds a nice feel. OK, so now in the mix, it's going to sound like this. And if we wanted to, we could make that sustain a little bit longer. Go back to the fourth envelope, which is your amp envelope, and do that again. Nice little tail there. Now that's pretty hot in the mix. I'd probably tuck that down a little bit, but let's move on. Okay, now for Omnisphere, we're going to just take this track. This we're going to take this clip for Omnisphere. And we're going to copy it over to the Omnisphere track. Disable Massive. Enable Omnisphere. Open this puppy up. Let's see what we got. We have a very blank Omnisphere. I've I have no other sounds except uh, I'm going to work, be working off of sound number one. Again, you can load up to eight sounds in Omnisphere. 
I'm going to start it up. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to find a base that's already existing to, to just work off of. So what I would do is I just type sign in because I want to sign you. So it'll wave base sine wave is an oscillator and go into the synth base area and just look for a base. That doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound good. That might work. What about this one? Ooh, that's deep and dark and very mellowy. So I'm liking this one. This is a sine wave here. So I'm loading up the patch right now. And um, my computer's running a little slow. So I'm ready to go. Um, now I noticed that there's two layers. Let's find out what these different layers are. So this one I'm going to turn on very low. And this one, if we turn this up, that one's a lot better. One of the first things I want to do is I want to tell it to pitch down a full octave. Okay. And this one, let's start this one a little bit higher. So in the edit menu, if you get out of this, you can go to, you can transpose this one up 12 or even 24. Ooh, much better. So we're going to turn down the volume a little bit. Um, in our envelopes area, we have uh, the in the amp the amplitude. Um, I've got. I'm going to actually control this a little bit so that it doesn't have such a long release. If I pull it way back. All right, so now we have a nice sub bass. Um, these are probably a little hot, but that's quite nice right there. So there's a sub bass. I've already gotten a nice drop. Let's listen to how that sounds in the mix. Very nice. That's it. You can drop those uh, bass drops all kind. They were great in dance songs. You can put them all over the place. Uh, they go well but when you're doing a breakdown or coming out of a chorus, going into a chorus. They work in a lot of places. Just don't overdo them, of course. I uh, hope you learned something. That's it for this week. Come back next week and I'll have another tutorial for you. Thanks for subscribing, guys. Let me know if you have any suggestions on what you want me to talk about. And stay frosty and keep writing and we'll see you next week. Later. Later.